a few hours ago. We had to run to shelter. Here, right behind me, is uh, one of them. There are at least two others uh, in this uh, parking lot. This is the reality uh, in, in Sderot. And yes, many times we speak of casualties, people being injured by uh, the, the rockets. None of those people that you saw there in the shelter, none of them has been injured. They will not be counted as casualties, but the trauma that creates for the little children there. Happy indeed to introduce Jeff Feldman, who's the CEO of UIA Victoria, to the Israel Connection. Hi, David. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Jeff, uh, we're talking about uh, what happened uh, a few months ago and how the UIA is uh, dealing with that in its uh, Col Nidre appeal. But to begin with, we heard a lot in the media of the sorry plight of children in Gaza after the latest round of fighting between Israel and Hamas last May. But we didn't really get that much in our media here about how Israeli children have been particularly affected. Would you like to tell us, Jeff, of some of the ill effects on children in Israel that were living close to the Gaza border? Incessant fire of, as we know, more than 4,000 rockets that indiscriminately. Yeah, over 4,300 rockets. Yeah. Over 4,300 rockets were fired from, from Gaza into Israel. Um, what we believe, uh, that although we don't have any confirmed report, reports, is about 25% of those rockets actually landed in Gaza. And from what I understand, again, not confirmed reports, there were at least 50 Palestinian children who were killed or injured as a result of that. So let's not forget the tragedy on that side as well, being imposed on all children by Hamas. It's, it's unacceptable. But from, from our perspective, the, the children in Israel who live close to the Gaza border, and even in, in this latest conflict, um, a lot further afield, the, the, the rockets are landing in Tel Aviv, um, Ramat Gan, uh, even close to Jerusalem, the, 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 the reach of the rockets was far greater this time. And we all hear stories of when you hear the siren, you've got 15 seconds to get to the bomb shelter. Uh, what we don't realize is the closer you are to the border, that 15 seconds is actually a lot less than 15 seconds. So for, for, for those communities who live very close to the border, they don't actually have 15 seconds. They've got, a, got, got less than 15 seconds to find a bomb shelter. And we've seen footage of a mother crying, saying no mother should have to choose which child she, she has to save because they just don't have time. I don't think there's a mother in the world who needs to choose which child she needs to save. We've heard stories of families. They don't know whether to wake their children up if, if the, the sirens go off in the middle of the night. They haven't got time to wake their children up, pick them up, get them into the bomb shelters. So you've got pe people sleeping in, in bomb shelters, living in bomb shelters, or simply saying, the siren's gone off, we can't wake them up, we can't get to the shelter in time, so we'll just sit it out and hope for the best and, and pray that, that no rockets land on us. It's a shocking, shocking situation. Um, I don't know how many of your listeners and viewers would be aware that Israel's become very innovative in its children's playgrounds, that parts of the playground are now bomb shelters. They're integrated into the playground, so they're, it's part of the play equipment, but the play equipment doubles up as a bomb shelter. So if the children are in the playgrounds and the, and the sirens go off, they run into the equipment that doubles up as a bomb shelter. It's a frightening way to live it, and the impact on children is, is too terrible. We've got children who are suffering from PTSD, displaying regressive behaviour, bedwetting, nightmares, uh, the likes of which we, we can't conceive of in, in Australia. We truly live in a lucky country. 
And we're doing what we can to help these children to, I don't suppose we can say recover, but to get treatment for suffering from PTSD and, and learn how to cope. This is something that people should be uh, aware of more. I think uh, we know of that episode on the ABC Q&A program uh, that took place at the time that one of our uh, members of our community unfortunately drew attention to the effects of uh, a dog rather than uh, the effects on human beings during this uh, Gaza conflict and the um, pro-Palestinian activists uh, took uh, great hold of that and made a, a kind of a mockery <coughs> of, uh, of what uh, she was telling the audience. It was, uh, it's more important, of course, that we hear about what is uh, seriously affecting uh, uh, people, human beings and children in particular. And you know, as we just were hearing from you, and I think the number of children who were affected was over a, a million in the, yeah. uh, in the catchment area that you're describing. And uh, for them, many of them, it was their first experience running to a bomb shelter or a safe room, yet one uh, which is going to be etched in their memories uh, forever and their, their sense of security has been shattered uh, and many remain uh, frightened and, and, and this is affecting uh, their mental, mental stability. <laughs> What are we going to have uh, happen? Uh, what is how is UIA going to uh, deal with this and try and uh, improve the situation for so many of these young people? Every year, UIA has a call the dry appeal, and many of the schools participate in it. And we are very grateful to the schools and the and the community as a whole for contributing to our call the dry appeal. One thing I'm very very proud of this year is is the entire community has come together as one. Um, the progressive community has decided that it will participate in this Colney Dre appeal as well. And I think that's a wonderful gesture to show we are one community, one Jewish community. We're all Jews. And all we're trying to do is help children. Um, so what we're doing this year is we are, the, the funds raised will all be directed towards the, the costs of providing rehabilitation for children who are suffering from PTSD. So it's a, it's a they are non, I suppose they're, they're complementary um, therapeutic uh, treatments. It's not uh, necessarily psychological treatments, but it's giving the children some respite. It's, it's giving them something else to focus on. It's taking them for an outing, letting, helping them to forget about their troubles for a day, um, but it's also helping them find strategies to cope with dealing with what they're suffering from at the moment. And one of the, the um, I suppose, treatments used for that is what we call animal therapy. We give the children, we take children to a children's farm. We give them the responsibility of looking after some animals. And that changes their mindset. So rather from being a, a victim mindset, they are now responsible for taking care of animals and it, it changes their ability to cope, it changes their outlook on life. And it tells them they're more than someone who is suffering, they're, they're someone who can make a positive contribution, they're someone who can help. It's an innovative and really impactful and I suppose low cost uh, form of treatment that has proven very, very effective over the years. דור שלם של ילדים נולד למציאות הבלתי אפשרית הזאת. אחד מכל שלושה ילדים סובל מפוסט טראומה. אני נוסע כדי לתת הצצה לחיי היום יום שלהם, ולהראות לכולכם כמה חשובה התמיכה שלכם, שמבטיחה שלילדים היקרים האלה בדרום יהיו הכלים וההזדמנויות להתגבר על הטראומה שלהם. ומגיעים אל הילדים לטיפול שעוזר להם להתמודד עם החרדות ואיך לחיות במקום כזה. מה המקום הזה עושה בשבילך? עוזר לי בעצם לרגע מהצד של האדום שלנו. 
אני מרגיש שיש לי ביטחון ופחות חרדה. אז אני יכולה אולי להילחץ פתאום, אבל יש תרגילים שאני מכירה מהמקום הזה שמאוד עוזרים. בשבילי חוסן חיות זה הרבה דברים. אני כל כך אוהב להיות פה ויש פה כל כך הרבה דברים, ואני כל כך אוהב בעלי חיים, וזה מדהים. מטפלים בחיה ומרגישים הרבה פעמים תחושת הצלחה, והחוויה הזאת זה החוויה שהרבה פעמים בונה את ההמשך של הטיפול. מתוך התחושה שהם יכולים, ושהם מצליחים, ושהם תורמים למישהו אחר, בעצם גם הם נבנים, וזה הבסיס לחוסן. בעצם התרומות של קרן היסוד הן אלה שמאפשרות לעשות את הטיפולים פה במקום ולאפשר לילדים להיכנס בצורה אחת ולשנות את החיים שלהם כך שהם יצאו עם הרבה יותר כלים וחוסן. most of the direct impact from uh, from what took place yes yeah, so with with the obviously the the major concentration was in the southern part of Israel and once again UIA um, our motto is we are for the people of Israel and that's for all the people of Israel and all we're trying to do in this call Nidre appeal is is to raise funds to help children. It doesn't matter who or, or what the children are. As long as they are children in Israel and children of Israel, we will, we will help them to recover. We'll help them to do the best. We'll do the best we can to help them recover from the trauma of the rocket attacks from Gaza. Every year, uh, the UIA organizes <coughs> its own special colony Israel appeal. Is, is that right, Jeff? Correct. Yeah, every, every year it's been very well supported and um, we're very, very pleased. It's obviously very difficult in, in lockdown. Uh, last year was our first year where we did a call the drought appeal in lockdown, but it was still extraordinarily successful despite the fact that we'd been in lockdown for over 100 days. And we are very hopeful that this year we'll receive the same and, and more support. With the... Uh... Jewish community, there are, there are other Jewish organizations that are running their own separate uh, Kol Nidre appeals. Uh, how do you compete uh, with this gamut of appeals that run, running across the whole community? <laughs> the, 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 the philanthropic landscape is becoming very crowded lately. And um, yes, everyone runs a Kol Nidre appeal because it's, it's the one time of year where everyone, you know, uh, Shuva Tfilo Tzedakah, with, uh, with charity, we, we avert the evil, the evil decree at, on, uh, on Kol Nidre. So, yes, everyone climbs on, on the bandwagon for a, for a Kol Nidre appeal. What differentiates UIA, and I'm not taking anything away from any of the other Jewish organizations or any of the other Israel-focused organizations, they all do phenomenal work. But what sets UIA apart from all of those organizations is UIA, through our umbrella body, Karen Hayesod, delivers on the national priorities of the State of Israel. And those aren't determined by UIA or by Karen Hayesod. They're determined in collaboration bet uh, between Karen Hayesod, the Jewish Agency for Israel, and the Government of Israel. And these three organizations meet regularly to determine the national priorities of Israel, and UIA funds those national priorities. Um, so that's, that's what makes our appeal, our Kol Nitra appeal, unique. Well, in these, in these difficult times, uh, unlike previous years, uh, we won't be seeing these traditional pledge cards on shul seats because of uh, the COVID restrictions on religious services. So perhaps you can explain for people who uh, feel as though they would like to support this particular appeal that you're conducting, how they can go about making a donation, Jeff? Well, the, the, the pledge cards are an interesting thing. Um, I find them a, a bit of an anachronistic uh, mechanism for, for, for collecting money. Um, what I've done since I started my tenure at UIA is I've looked at ways of increasing engagement and reducing cost, which means we can send more money raised to Israel. So the pledge cards do come with The cost, obviously, they do come with an administrative cost, getting into the shuls, um, getting them back from shuls, 
sending out statements, collecting, uh, following up on, on, on uh, pledges and collecting payments. And that's all very labor intensive. So what we've done is move the entire campaign online. There is a website that people can go to. Uh, David, if, uh, if you can put the link up. Yes, um, the And it'll take you straight through to a donation page. We're making use of QR codes in our marketing. So if you see our billboards up in the community, or if you see an advert in the Jewish News or the, uh, the, the Jewish Report, you can simply scan the QR code. It'll take you directly through to the donation page. The donation is made online. Your receipt is emailed to you. And it's a very clean, simple process. So that's, that's how we're trying to make it easier for the, the, the donor community to, to contribute and make it more cost effective for them as well. And it's worth noting as well that 100% uh, of the proceeds of your appeal will be remitted to this correct. We, project so people can correct. Be we, that whatever they donate will go to the cause. Yes, nothing will be held back to cover any overheads. 100% of the proceeds will be remitted to support these um, rehabilitation programs for children. Well, that's uh, a great appeal that you're running there, Jeff, and I commend it to uh, all those people who are listening and, and, and watching us as we speak. And uh, let's look forward uh, to the high holidays, uh, which are coming very, very soon. I, I wish your whole uh, organisation uh, the best and, uh, and, and, and Shana Tova to everybody who works so uh, strongly and, and, and positively for supporting Israel. Uh, it's a very uh, commendable effort. Uh, Thank you, you, David. Keep, uh, working away at. Thank you very much. And um, yes, we have a wonderful team, um, very close knit team in the office. And uh, just take the opportunity to wish everyone in the in the community here and whoever watches this uh, this broadcast a shana tova mutaka, a sweet, a happy year. And as I've been wishing people lately, the year of sanity, because I think we all need a bit of that right now. Yeah, let's uh, hope for uh, the sun to break through the clouds. We hope so. <laughs>